Hi, today I'm going to share with you why trigger point pain keeps coming back and what you can do about it. Now, do you ever wonder why you can use evidence-based trigger point therapy but the pain keeps coming back? The big reason is that the evidence is based upon is terribly misleading. Let me explain. In scientific trials of trigger point therapy, the goal is usually to just deactivate trigger points, not eliminate them. Deactivate simply means revert them back from their active state where they spontaneously cause pain to their latent state where they only cause pain when provoked. In other words, only cause pain when you press on them. So, why do scientists do this? Surely they'd understand that if the trigger points were still there, next time they were aggravated they would reactivate and it would start all over again. It's the trigger point version of resetting a circuit breaker but leaving the electrical fault. I can only speculate that they do this because it's the only way they can get some positive results to ride up. I'll show you what I mean. This is a review of trials of dry needling trigger points and here is a summary table. If you look at the column intervention group you can see what they did and the final column shows how long they did it for. For example, if we look at the second listing, it says they use dry needling once a week for five weeks. If we look at the second last column, it says primary outcome measures. That's what they measure. You can see that pretty well all the trials did pain intensity VAS and functional disability RDQ. VAS stands for the visual and low scale, which is just one of those things where someone marks on a scale of 1 to 10 how sore they are. And RDQ is just one of those questionnaires where they ask how the condition affects them in daily life. Now, the scientists managed to find trigger points before they did the needling, but very conveniently don't check whether they're still there afterwards. Instead, they just use a scientific method of asking patients if they feel better. I've got a massive folder full of trials of trigger point therapy and they almost all follow the same basic pattern. I could only find three very rare exceptions that check whether the trigger points were still there. And in each case they certainly were. Evidence-based treatment is based on trials like these. But the scientists are just proving stupidity. And you could strongly argue that it's being dishonest by omission. Why dishonest? Let's have a look at the example I showed you before where they use one session of dry needling a week for five weeks. Suppose you're informing a patient about his or her options. You can say, dry needling has been scientifically proven to reduce pain. Let's book you in for five visits. Or you could say, five sessions of dry needling will make you feel better, but your problem will still be there so the pain will probably come back again next time you aggravate it. The first way is admitting important information that is terribly misleading. That's obvious because when fully informed the second way, they probably walk out the door saying, well if you're not going to fix it up, I might as well just go and see a GP and get some drugs. So, if you're basing your treatments on this sort of so-called evidence, that's the reality. Hopefully you think we should be doing a lot better, so the question is, how can you get rid of those trigger points? Thankfully some scientists have done some excellent work on what trigger points are and how they form, which gives us a lot of good information on how to treat them. Also, I managed to find three trials that did check for trigger points after their series of treatments, and each managed to produce partial elimination suggesting that if they persisted, they could eliminate more. Now let's have a look at those clues. First, what is a trigger point? Scientists tell us that they are formed by microscopic damage to part of a muscle causing it to go into spasm, which locks on by a positive neurological feedback loop. This causes the muscle to tighten, which places pressure on the blood vessels restricting blood flow. Now with the nerves continually giving off neurotransmitters, the muscle fibres continuing to contract and blood flow restricted, 
The area around the spasm suffers a build-up of neurotransmitters and wastes and the depletion of oxygen and nutrients. This creates a toxic region around the trigger point which stimulates further spasm and the whole thing keeps going around in circles. Knowing that, to treat trigger points we need to address those issues to stop the cycle going around in circles. In particular, we need to disrupt the neurological feedback loop, we need to relax the muscle, and lastly, stimulate blood flow, which of course will help flush the waste of neurotransmitters and bring in fresh nutrients and oxygen. There's one treatment that does all these beautifully, and that's vibration massage. Vibration from 30 to 50 Hz has been scientifically shown to disrupt neurological feedback loops, relax muscles, and increase blood flow. There's a lot more info about that on our website. Um, better still, it's easy to use. All you need to do is sit the massager over the trigger point and let the vibrations do their thing. So, that's what trigger point therapy needs to do. Now let's see what we can learn from the trials that did check whether trigger points were still there. The most thorough was one trial that used 12 weekly sessions of therapy for patients with shoulder pain. After 12 sessions, patients felt a lot better, but here's the trigger point count. Only about 20% were gone. Rounding it off, that's about 2% per session. It's not wonderful, but if you kept going at that rate, after 50 sessions, most of them would be gone. Now that's our problem. Most patients will be gone long before 50 sessions of needles, lasers or manual trigger point therapy. So the only realistic option is if patients can do some of this therapy at home. This is where vibration massage comes to the fore again. As long as you can instruct them properly, patients can easily do some themselves. Of course musculoskeletal conditions can be complex so there's a lot more to it. The overall management needs the assistance and guidance of a properly trained professional. But the home use of vibration massage helps provide two critical ingredients. The effective therapy and a way for them to have a large number of applications over time they need. That's the main reason I built my massages. I recognise that patients with chronic conditions continually relapse because they needed regular therapy over a very long period of time but, of course, never got it. You'll find a lot more info on vibration massage, our massages, and treated trigger points on our website and YouTube channel. If you have any comments or feedback, I'd love to hear from you. Lastly, if you found this video useful, we'll bring out more, so if you subscribe and hit the bell, YouTube will let you know when they're available. Thank you very much.